In this problem, we're given two functions, f of x and g of x, and we're asked to find these other functions here, f plus g, f minus g, f times g, and f divided by g, as well as the domain of each. Let's go ahead and go through each one individually. First, let's do f plus g. So to find f plus g, all you basically do is add them up. The correct notation would be f plus g of x. This is the correct notation for the sum. And basically, it's just going to be f plus g. So if you wanted to show all of the work, you could write it like this, f of x plus g of x. Then you can just replace uh, f with f, so x plus 7, and then g with g, so 5x squared. So that's it. That's all you have to do. Basically, for f plus g, all you do is you add them. So the function is called f plus g, and so this formula here, f plus g of x, tells you how to actually compute it. So basically, it's just saying you add them up. All right, for the domain in this case, uh, it's just going to be all real numbers, and the reason is there's no division by zero, there's no square roots. The domain is all of the x values that you can plug in here. That makes sense. So you can plug in anything you like, and it's good. So in this case, it would be all real numbers, or an interval notation that would be negative infinity to infinity. So that would be the domain of f plus g. All right, part b. Part b wants us to find f minus g. So same thing. It would be parentheses f minus g of x, and this is equal to f of x minus g of x. This is the formula for f minus g. And basically, you just subtract. So um, it would be x plus 7 minus and then 5x squared. And that's it. Pretty easy. So that would be uh, f minus g. Again, there's no issues here at all. There's no division by 0. There's no funny square roots. So the domain here, again, is all real numbers. That takes care of that one. Part C, we have to find f times g. So f times g of x. So the way this is defined, it's defined as the product. So it's just f of x times g of x. This one might require a little bit more work. So f of x is equal to x plus 7. So x plus 7. And then g of x is 5x squared. 5x squared. And we just have to multiply. So let's see, x times 5x squared will give us 5x cubed because we add the exponent, right? There's a 1 here. And when you multiply, uh, you add the exponents. Plus, and then 7 times 5x squared is 35x squared. So that would be the product, which is called f times g. And again, uh, there's no fractions. There's no square roots or anything. So the domain here is, again, uh, all real numbers. So just negative infinity to infinity. And the very last case uh, would be f over g, this one here, f over g. So that's defined as follows, f over g of x, and this is equal to f of x divided by g of x. So f of x is x plus 7, and then g of x is simply 5x squared. So in this case, that's the answer, and there is an issue, right? So the domain is the set of all numbers that you can plug in that makes sense. So there's one number that you can't plug in here. So notice x can't be equal to 0, because it would make the bottom 0 if you put in a 0 here. So the domain is everything except 0. So if you wanted to draw a picture, so here's 0, and it's basically everything except this. So it's all of these numbers here, and all of these numbers here, but you don't include the 0. So it's all the numbers up to zero, and you don't include it. Then you start at zero, and you don't include it, and then all the other numbers. So from the picture, it would be negative infinity all the way to zero, union, and then zero all the way to, to infinity, with the parentheses around the zero to indicate that we're going to exclude it. So that only happened because we had a fraction. So in all the other cases, um, there was no issue at all. There was no fractions or, or square roots or anything funky. So that's it. I hope this video has been helpful.